Johan, how much more might you find out after Sunday's defeat at Saracens than you would have done had you have won there? Yeah, I mean, always it's never nice to lose, and you know, then you've got a lot of questions, and you look quite hard at yourself, and what could you've done to do better and prepare better and, and get the side better. But then again, there's always uh, positives when you when you lose, and there's time to rectify it. It's it's bad when you lose and you close to the season ending, and you you know you need that points, but there's still a lot of time to to get back onto the horse. Um, we've learned a lot of lessons in the fact that you know. The conditions. There was a wind that that was quite heavy in the first half. We didn't play well against it, and uh, and obviously we were on the day we we were not good enough in the in, in our contact skills. We lost a lot of ball in contact and stuff that we can improve on. But I think as much as there's um, you know hard lessons for us to learn from individuals on on their own games collectively as a team. After you know it it after. You almost the dusk settles down and you analyze yourself. We we still excited to think. Uh, uh, um, once we looked at the game, re-looked at the game, we actually saw a lot of opportunities that because of lack of of decision or maybe a lack of of, of, of executing, we didn't capitalize. And that against one of the best teams in the competition. So the disappointing thing is we we couldn't on the day exploit it, um, and that's where we have to get better. Um, but it's stuff that we can fix and, and that we're excited about, and hopefully, you know, in the near future we will we'll get to finish those opportunities. And obviously, scoring the two tries at the end means that you ended the game on a positive. No concerns yeah. about fitness or anything like that of yeah. the players or hearts. I suppose all of those things are going to be called for this week with a six-day turnaround ahead of Harlequins. Exactly. You know, there was there was a lot of effort. Um, and, and, and then the boys never gave up playing. Um, that's a good sign. They never, you know, throw in the towel. So again, like you said, that's a positive to build on. We obviously then must also be realistic and know that they knew the game is done and dusted and, and maybe relaxed a bit. So we, are, we, know, we don't want to take too much out of that. Other than, you know, they showed a lot of character there from our guys. But like you said, you know, short turnaround, we've got about a whole list of players who's at the moment, you know, um, got a lot of bumps and bruises and stuff that we have to manage through the through the week. Uh, but it doesn't matter what team we put out, you know, there's going to be expectation that we that we perform must perform better, especially you know in front of our home supporters. And a couple of those injuries you mentioned in the back row. How are Ruan and how are uh, how's Lewis Ludlow? Lewis is st- is tracking really well at the moment. It looks like he's has passed every test so far that has been. Also of him, obviously there's another two, three steps that he must must pass um, from a running point of view and see if he's symptom free. So he's he's going well at the moment. Uh, very positive about him. Ruan will be touch and go. He's got a, a very bad bleed and a knock on his knee. Um, only time will heal that. You know, um, it can be that he's fine for Saturday. It can be that he that the knee is still not functional as it, as it must be. The good news in that saying, you know, it, um, after the scans, there's no ligament d- damage like like uh, Tom Savage had, or, or you know, or crucial ligaments that that's you talk of, of three, six, or nine months. So at worst case, hopefully, you'll only miss this week. Um, so so the, a bit of a bit of more, more positive note uh, news this morning. And Val Rapava Ruskin seems to have been close the last couple of weeks. Hasn't quite made the the actual match day, having been named in the 23. What was the latest on him? Yeah, Val was is so unfortunate. You know, he recovered after the Bath game. Uh, we tried to get him ready for the Bristol game with the with the injury he had on his ribs. He couldn't, you know, obviously pass the last test. Um, then on last week, two days before the Saracens game, he uh, pulled a, a calf muscle. You know, and um, again, it's a it's a thing that we have to manage weekly. He'll be uh, assessed later the week to see is he a possibility. At the moment, I would say you know we won't risk him if, if need to, but uh, you know we'll make that call a bit later in the week. Any of the players who haven't featured so far this season are there any of those into the mix now able to come in? None of the list. Uh, you know everybody knows the, you know Tom Marshalls, Ruan Dreyers, uh, Jaco Krills. Uh, Oli Thorley's, Henry Purdy's, those guys are available for this week. So we have to do with, with the guys that, that obviously uh, is fit and healthy and, and 
be the best possible side. Same with Willie Hines. As yeah, well. Willie is also not available for this week. Harlequins are having a really tough time so far under Paul Gustard. I suppose, in some ways, are they kind of a little bit where Gloucester were last season with not a lot of time with the new man in charge? Yeah, it's always difficult if you come in, you know, late as a, as a coach or a director of rugby and, and to get the philosophy and style over of how you want to do things, especially when, when the competition starts going and you feel the pressure of performing on top of you. But the thing is, it makes him also a dangerous side because they, they're they going to be a desperate side that wants to come and, and, and pick up points. Um, and then the other thing is, if you look at the four rounds, uh, I just to my colleague, uh, you know, thinking now is that they haven't lost the game by massive margins. You know, I think in all it was maybe seven points was the worst. So they were always in 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 the games. You know, it's maybe one or two moments that they have where they where they give away points that that cost them. But um, they when you look at the, you know they still got what four or five guys in the England squad. They've got quality players, so uh, the, the last thing we can is, is take their form. Um, we must look at ourselves and, and say that we was not we were not good enough on Sunday. We need to rectify that. They had three players sin binned at the weekend against Bristol. You had a couple of players sin binned on the first game of the season, having had only seven in the whole of last season. How has the game sort of changed this season, if you like? Are, are players having to adapt? Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, you know, it depends on for what reasons. If it's if it's cynical, if it's maybe preventing a, a quick ruck ball, if they're on your try line, whatever those things, you you have to obviously take the knock. I think where the grey area is is, and where a lot of those cards come from is in the high tackles and 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 those debatable points, you know, and, and you have to live with that. And for for sure that you you know as players and as coaches, we don't want that, and we we try to to change our technique and try and tackle different and do things a bit different, but it, it, it's, it happens so quickly, you know, and I always say if, if common sense and, and intent can be the, the judgment, you know, the player makes 15 tackles in a game, he gets one wrong and he, and he has to pay a price for that. Um, it's a bit harsh, but, uh, you know, we're all under the same law and um, it's up to us to keep our discipline. Finally, for me, what about Danny Cipriani? <laughs> Obviously, Eddie Jones has said what he said, you've said what you've said. Eddie's not said, though, what he feels Danny needs to do to get into the England squad. Presumably he has told Danny. Are you confident that Danny can achieve that here, that he's not being asked to do anything by England that doesn't fit with how Gloucester want him to play and how Gloucester want to play? No, not at all. I think, you know, a lot of the things that, that Eddie expects from Danny, you know, it will it will add to him, to his game, and it will be good for him to, to do that. Um, you know, he is doing a lot of those things, and... You must obviously just work harder in, in certain areas. Um, the reality is for me is that, you know, uh, I've, I've explained it on, on the weekend. I said um, the one thing that that is always difficult is if you compile a squad. And so, you know, yeah, we're fortunate. Everybody is in the squad and everybody has to, has to train and play together. But if you like back home, if you if you pick a super rugby squad out of out of fifty or sixty players, that was to my availability. You sometimes sit down and look at the squad, and you decide: Do you want three hookers in the squad? Do you want three tens? Do you want three nines? Those those specialist positions. And sometimes you take a risk and take only two, um, and because you rather want a, f a fifth hooker, a fifth uh, lock, or a fifth back rower, whatever. So you divide the cake. As you, as you, as a coach, and I think sometimes people forget that a bit. That then you, you, you've got three quality teams in Ford, Farrell, and and Cipriani, and then you say, okay, I've built, I've got this relationship with these two for quite a while. They understand certain things, and they tick the boxes. That's important for me. So, I let me get the third one to that. But the luxury is, if my squad comp compilation changes, that I lose a team through injury. I know is my automatically my choice. So sometimes it's not about what the guy doesn't do, or doesn't do good enough. It's just if the guy, if the coach has, has already built a squad around those guys for a few seasons, it's it's much easier to add later. And I think um, you know Danny falls in that category where um, Eddie has probably got a, a wrong relationship already with those two guys, and he's only coming on the scene in the last year, 
where Eddie looked at him, and now there's some stuff that he can work on. But also, you know, Danny must just be patient now. Um, keep working. Hopefully, Gloucester will keep performing as a team, and that will help him.